Hi, and welcome to the service for the third Sunday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading from Scripture today is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, the fifth chapter. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, so, for, <clears throat> so that are to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians conveys one pretty clear message. Christ has set you free, so live like it. It's simple enough, right? But there is a catch for us that lies in a question. Do we understand the nature of the freedom that our Lord has given us? Maybe not. Freedom is a broad word with many meanings. The freedom for which the nation of Ukraine presently fights is political in nature. They want freedom from Russia's military interference. They want to protect the, the, um, the, their, their sovereignty as a nation. When young people move away from home, uh, they may delight in the feeling of being free from the obligation to the rules that their parents set for them in their household. And freedom is always on the minds of school children at a time like this, for summer holidays gives them two months of freedom from the busy schedule of school life. To the Galatians, though, Paul writes of a freedom from the spiritual forces that bind us in life. He wrote to warn the Galatian Christians that if they listened to those who claimed that they needed to obey the Mosaic laws to be sure of their freedom from sin and death, then they would accomplish nothing more than to make themselves 
the sorry slaves of a false faith and hope. Being circumcised cannot atone for the sins of the world. Neither can abstaining from certain foods or doing work or doing no work on the Sabbath. Christ took away our sins by pouring out his holy lifeblood on the cross. He did it for us. The drive to redeem ourselves runs deep within every one of our hearts, but it is a misguided and a proud sort of pipe dream that convinces us that if we just obey the right rules, then God will be happy with us. Paul declares that Christ has set us free from sin and death. He calls us to stand firm in that gift of freedom by faith and not to turn back to the slavery of misusing laws and rules as materials for building ourselves a highway to heaven. Furthermore, the apostle warns of a second form of bondage that seeks to claim us. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. If you ask the average person, to define freedom these days, their answer will likely sound something like this. If I'm free, then I'm able to choose to do whatever I want to do in life, as long as I don't hurt anybody else. Freedom equals personal autonomy. I alone am the boss of me. The Word of God, however, reveals that those who believe in this sort of freedom are blind to the reality that such freedom is really just another manifestation of our fallen human nature. When a group of people were confused because Jesus had promised to set them free through the truth of his word, he said, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever sins is a slave to sin. Doing what you want in life is not freedom because what we want is conditioned and controlled by the power of the sin that we've inherited from Adam. Ever since Adam and Eve turned their backs on God in the garden, we've all been doing the same in one way or another. Sin comes naturally to us. And because it feels like the des its desires feel like our own desires, that we often find them acceptable. Because we are sinners, the things that God forbids in his commandments are often the very things we want to do. From birth, we are turned in on ourselves, and we have no power to turn ourselves outward. But Christ has set us free, free from sin's bonds. By becoming human, by living in obedience to God's law, and by suffering and dying in our place on the cross, God's Son, Jesus Christ, has robbed sin of its power to dominate us with, its, with temptation and with condemnation. Jesus rose from the dead to free us from our sins with his word of release. Peace be with you. Peace of which he spoke was peace with God so that <clears throat> our sins no longer anger God because he accepts Christ's sacrifice in place of our own condemnation. Now we are free to repent of our evil desires and deeds at the sound of the law's rebuke instead of angrily defending ourselves. We are free to trust that Jesus died for our sins to save us. We are free to believe that when we were baptized into Christ, we put on his life and his righteousness to wear as our own. With each day, we are free to exchange the self-serving ways of our old nature, the flesh, for the loving service of our neighbors as our new way of life in Jesus. The Son of God has set us free, and so yes, we are free indeed. We are free, declares Paul, to live our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. 
But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. God gave us his Spirit when we were baptized. The Spirit is in us, and he continues to come to us, to teach us through God's word read and preached, and to console and strengthen us in faith through the body and blood of his Son that are given to us in his supper. From, from the Spirit, we receive new godly desires to resist the lure of all the sexual lusts and sins that are so celebrated these days. He inspires us to devote ourselves in faith to Christ alone and to reject the idols that compete for our allegiance in life. The Spirit helps us to endure life's sufferings with patience and trust that Jesus is strong for us even when we feel weak. He leads us to forgive those who mistreat us, to live as peacefully with others as we possibly can, and to rejoice in the gifts that God has given to our neighbors rather than envying them for their blessedness. We are free, yet for now, we live with this internal conflict that rages between our flesh sinful nature that we inherited from Adam and the Spirit who makes us holy through Christ. In this life, there's no end to the trouble that the devil and the world try to get us into uh, with the cooperation of our own flesh. But Christ has set us free from their power, and the Holy Spirit leads us to live our lives in defiance against their evil designs. Under the law, we were in the sorry state of knowing what we should do and be, but completely unable to do it. But now that we are no longer under the law, but redeemed by Christ, the Spirit helps us to stand firm in the face of temptations with our eyes set on the full freedom and deliverance that will come to us when our King returns for us. We belong to Jesus and our life of liberty is rooted firmly in his death and resurrection. With him we have died to sin and have been raised to walk in the Spirit's path of repentance from sin and trust in our Lord's forgiveness. Christ has set us free from sin, death, and Satan so that we can live new lives of loving service for our neighbors. In and among us, through the word and sacraments, the Spirit abides. Richly and daily, he forgives us for our sins. Graciously, he breathes the life of Christ's resurrection into our hearts. He opens our lips to sing God's praise and to offer him our unceasing prayer. He teaches our tongues to speak winsomely of Jesus in our conversations with others. He reorients our lives from being turned in upon ourselves to reaching out to others, and to God and to his creatures. From our hearts, he brings forth the virtuous fruit that gives witness that we are people of Christ, set free to love as he loves us. Like the beautiful roses that outside of our church are blooming in um, in bright colors right now. The Spirit makes our lives grow and blossom with the holy fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of this to the honor of him who has set us free indeed. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts, your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us speak our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of the Church, you give pastors and church workers to proclaim your steadfast love, to announce freedom from the yoke of slavery to sin, and to point all toward the cross of Christ. Bless their faithful work, that their labor in the Lord may never be in vain. Grant faith, wisdom, and patience to the people of Faith Courtney and Bethany Campbell River, who wait upon you for the gift of new pastors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you established the family to be a place of protection and growth. Grant that our homes would never become a stumbling block to the kingdom of God, but that they would serve to foster within us the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all power and might, to you belong the kingdom and the glory forever. Give insight and wisdom to our civil leaders. Direct them to punish evildoers, to reward the righteous, to defend the vulnerable, and to strive for peace among the many peoples who dwell here. Grant that Christians may live quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who rules over all the nations, grant to those who are threatened by war and unrest relief from such oppression. Frustrate the evil designs of violent people, humble them and turn their hearts towards peace. Provide homes for those who have been forced to flee theirs by, the blessing, uh, by blessing the efforts of other nations to welcome refugees among them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of refuge, your salvation draws near to all who trust in you. Grant peace to your people and show us your salvation. Hear our petitions for healing, strength, and comfort for all those who are in need. Be near them as the refuge of the weary and the God who preserves his people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doing, doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for joining us today, and God watch over you wherever you go. Bye for now.